Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather next week, 10 days. For today's second video, that's going to take us around the 2nd of June and we'll be able to extend out beyond that. We extended GFS and ECM ensembles. They run to around a couple of weeks. Uh, at the end of the video, how long is CFS V2 for the next four weeks? That will take us into the second half of June, of course. So, weekend forecast has been released, as always on a Saturday. You've got your weekend uh, look ahead. It's going to be an anti cyclonic week, although we're starting off very windy still today and with uh, quite a lot of rain up in the north. But all of that's going to be getting out of the way. Uh, in the uh, it's going to be getting out of the way in the coming few hours, and by tomorrow we're we'll back under uh, a ridge from the Azores high, and high pressure going to be dominated weather really throughout uh, throughout the coming week. So have a look at weekend forecast and see what's going on there. Tonight we're going to have the Beijing Climate Centre versus CFS six month look ahead. It's just for fun, just have a bit of a laugh at it, but we will be seeing what those two models are showing for the next six months going from to from, go from next month uh, June all the way out to uh, November. So that'll be quite an interesting uh, watch. Uh, I'll talk to you through what's coming up over uh, tomorrow's video as the rest of Bank Holiday Weekend at the end of this video. Now, if we're doing anything else, I'm going to say a big thank you to our latest uh, Gaz Webby's YouTube channel member. So hello and thank you so much to latest uh, channel member, Michael Campbell. Thank you so much, Michael Campbell, for becoming Gaz uh, latest YouTube channel member. It's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, Michael, uh, for doing that. If you would like to become a channel member for Gaz Webby's, all you do is click the join button that you see on the uh, Gaz uh, YouTube homepage, or with all of the videos on the channel, take you through to another page where you can uh, see what benefits you get from becoming a channel member and sign up uh, as well. If you can't see the join button, then uh, there is a link in the description with videos uh, here at YouTube. And we also link to it, um, uh, or also, also link to the join page via the homepage at gazwebbies.com. So it's relatively easy to uh, get to the join page. You can see what benefits you get for becoming a channel member, and also you can sign up on that page. Uh, we've been doing this for just over a month now, um, and been a really phenomenal success. So thank you so much to all of our uh, channel members, and of course, thank you so much all of our patrons and PayPal donors as well. They have supported Gaz of his through this coronavirus crisis. It's been absolutely uh, amazing and thank you so much everybody uh, for the support that you have given us and our promise to you is that we are going to keep recording and uploading and uh, we're going to keep live streaming, we're going to keep the written content going up the website uh, and we're going to keep trying out new things as well so we've been trying out new content we brought back the European Outlook after a four year break uh, we have started doing a weekend forecast for America we've begun a discord uh, server for gas is to allow people to check in there and uh, have a chat we're going to be bringing the chat uh, back to uh, gaswebbies.com from the 1st of June as well so um, we're across all of the platforms you name it we're on it and, uh, and we we're just going to keep on going, and that's our promise to you for the support that you have given us over the past few uh, weeks uh, during this crisis. So thank you so much, everybody, uh, for the, the support that, uh, that you've given to Gals Web. It's been absolutely fantastic. And, of course, special thank you to our latest channel member, Michael Campbell. Thank you so much, Michael, uh, for doing that. Right, we're going to move on with video. We're going to start off censoring temperature. So the CT for May is currently looking like this. This is provisional up to the 22nd uh, yesterday of May. We're standing at 11.7. That's an anomaly of 0.8 of a degree above average. Uh, this is going to carry on going up, I think, over the next week. So uh, I would anticipate we're going to finish up somewhere in kind of the... Um, kind of mid-12s, I would have thought, mid to upper 12, something like that, uh, is where we are likely to finish with the CT. It's going to be a warmer than average month. The deviation to average shouldn't be as great as it was in April, which is 2.5 degrees above average, uh, and nor should it be as great as it was in February or January, but nevertheless, it is going to be another warmer than average uh, month, a very warm first half to uh, 2020. The reason we're going to see the CT going up over the next week is that high pressure is going to be in control and it will be bringing up uh, warm winds from the south and southwest as well. We see this on the uh, 500 mil of our high tommy flow charts from Penn State University for the next week to 10 days with the ECM on the top and the GFS, which you can have a look at, uh, we will have a look at in a moment, on the bottom. So uh, with this, red is extrapolating to above average heights, which is high pressure. Blue is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. 
And we see that in the uh, in the week 10 day time frame, so it's staying through seven days, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got a large area of above average heights extending out from the Atlantic up to northern Europe, below average heights are out to the northwest. The jet stream's been pushed northwards as well, and it just implies we have a lot of very warm and dry weather to come as we go into the uh, last stages of, uh, of May and into the beginning of June. It looks basically anti cyclonic there even into the start of June. The GFS is very similar. Again, it's got quite a large area of above average heights in the, in the Atlantic, extending into the UK and up to Northern Europe as well. Below average heights are out to the Northwest. Jet stream has been pushing northwards too. So once again, we're looking at a lot of dry and uh, you would have thought warm weather to come in uh, in the week ahead. So up to day 7, 8, 9, 10, high pressure remains well and truly in control of the overall weather pattern. Now that doesn't mean we can't have some showery bursts within that. On Wednesday, for example, we may get a little trough setting up within uh, the area of high pressure. That might bring some heavy showers to parts of northern England, for example, on Wednesday. So it might, might, might not be continuously dry, um, but Overall, high pressure is in the ascendancy for the next week to 10 days, as it has been for several weeks now. Uh, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average. Uh, looking at Manchester today, or oh, West Central. So uh, we're starting off on the cool side at the moment with the upper air temperatures. But from here on in, they're basically on the up, really. And as we go through the last week of May, we're looking at above average temperatures, upper air temperatures and surface temperatures uh, to come, really. And that's quite a warm ensemble, even going into the first sort of week of June. Um, looks like overall most ensemble members are on the warmer than average side. Precipitation wise, a lot of dry weather to come over the next few days. Gradually begins to turn more unsettled towards the latter stages of next week. Um, and possibly a bit more unsettled still as we go through the first week of June. But that's very extended rain stuff as we've been saying in the videos uh, as we've been going through this week. The unsettled stuff doesn't seem to be getting uh, a great deal closer, although there could be hints of it, that it goes a little bit showery there sometime around month's end. But I think really, for the next week anyway, uh, there's going to be there's not going to be all that much rain, except today, which is very wet across northern and western Scotland, and also down in the south, where we have got some quite heavy showers. But overall, it is quite a warm, uh, a warm outlook, really, with those upper air temperatures. Temperature anomalies from the 23rd to the 31st of May are going to be slightly above average, a slightly mild on average week coming up. Precipitation anomalies from the 21st of May to the 31st are drier than average as well. So very little change really on the setup over the past few weeks. We remain uh, basically with a lot of high pressure going on and pretty warm and dry weather continues. That's how we look as we go through to Tuesday. Then high pressure sat right over top of the country. This will come by weekend forecast, of course, but high pressure is sat right over country on Tuesday. It brings loads of dry, fine and warm conditions with it. Some sort of trough might drop into this high pressure as we go through into Wednesday. That little feature just there might bring some showers within the middle of the ridge. But by the time we get through to Thursday, we're well and truly back under the high pressure again. And that carries us through to the latter stages of the coming week with high pressure in control. Through to next weekend, the last weekend of May. Slowly but surely the ridge begins to weaken a little bit. So as we move up towards day 10, we just start to turn things a little bit cooler, a little bit more showery perhaps by the time we get through to Tuesday the 2nd of June. Just a bit of a northwesterly, bringing a few showers into the northwestern parts of Scotland. Nothing overly dramatic, but uh, it could just be a little bit more showery by day 10. And then it's going to extend the range for this particular GFS run starts to develop some northern blocking so it begins to take high pressure up towards Greenland and sets up a trough of low pressure across the western part of Europe that would be more unsettled than we've had for several weeks would be cool as well uh, and there will be quite a bit of rain with that trough of low pressure. But it's extended rain stuff, of course, this. So for the first week of June, it's a really, really long way out. So it's very unreliable. As we move up towards the end of this uh, GFS 6 o'clock run, we're gradually starting to uh, maybe see signs of the Azores High having a go uh, ridging up from the southeast. But even then, by the 8th of June, we're still looking a little bit unsettled. So this GFS run does turn things cooler and more unsettled through the first week of uh, June. But I'm not sure how seriously we can take that. Let's have a look at some other models. This is the GEM. Again, high pressure, well and truly in control for Tuesday. Brings loads of dry, fine and warm weather with it. Through to the middle and second 
second half next week. Again, the high pressure is uh, dominating the weather. Winds are pushing up from the south to southeast, so uh, temperatures are going to be pretty warm. We probably lose a humid feel that we like to have around the middle of the week, though, in the second half week. So it'll be very pleasant, I think, in the second half week. Temperatures low 20s, plenty of sunshine and low uh, sort of humidity as well. Now, as we move up towards the final weekend of uh, May, then uh, low pressure begins to break in from off the Atlantic today on the GM. So that starts to turn us a little bit more unsettled as well next weekend, just turning a bit more showery. Um, and eventually the trough of low pressure drops away to the south and allows the ridge to build back in uh, from the north. So there is a more showery interlude next weekend uh, with the GM. And then we're back to high pressure, really, by the time we get through to the first week of, uh, or the first days of June. That's very different from the GM to what the GFS was showing. Let's see what the ECM makes of it all. So, uh, again, high pressure dominates the weather on Tuesday. Mainly dry, fine, uh, very warm conditions through the middle part of the week. The high pressure sticks around into second half next week as well. Gradually, we start to pull winds up from the south as we move through into uh, Saturday the 30th of May, a week away. So that's bringing warm air out of France. But we have got pressure weakening to our west or southwest. That might bring an increased risk of showers next weekend. That uh, potentially looks a little bit thundery there on the 31st of May. This little trough just here over northern parts of France. That could threaten some thunder into the south. However, I think most places are probably still dry up to this point. And by the time we get through to day 10, actually the high pressure has reasserted itself again. So uh, we finish up at day 10 on Tuesday the 2nd of June, back under the ridge of high pressure. And uh, again, it will be mostly dry, fine, and also uh, warm, potentially even uh, very warm at that point. Uh, these are options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, getting us to the 2nd of June. We have 18 members of the ECM ensembles with below average heights coming in from the north. Above average heights are pulled out into the middle of the Atlantic jet stream, doing something a little bit like that. Uh, so, rather showery, uh, you would have thought, in uh, in uh, the day 10 time frame with that particular option. A little bit on the cool side and rather showery. 18 members of the ECM ensembles have a ridge of above average heights building in from off the Atlantic and going up towards northern parts of Europe. Some below average heights are to our south. Winds are coming in from an easterly direction uh, with that to them. And then we've got 15, including the operational run. The operational run is the run with Jeffrey Dogan, of course. It has high pressure sort of ridging in from the west. That's bringing lots of dry, fine, and pretty warm weather with it. But only 15 doing that. So um, maybe not all that well supported uh, by the uh, ECM ensembles um, by the time we get to day 10 with the operational run. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. So this is getting us to the 7th of June. 20 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to the north, low pressure to the south. Winds are in from the east. That could be bringing some heavy, thundery rain towards southern parts of the country, uh, actually. Uh, 11 with high pressure more or less over top of the country. That's going to be mostly dry and fine. Uh, another 11 with high pressure to our south, some lower pressure to the north. Winds are sort of westerly with that one. And then nine with an area of below average heights, low pressure, sort of two hours south and east. Could be cool and quite unsettled with that option. Low pressure city to the south and east, bringing showers or longer spells of rain, maybe thundery rain uh, to the south. Also hints of a mid-Atlantic ridge. So uh, that's probably the most unsettled option of all. Could be cool and wet with that option. So there's a possibility that we keep high pressure going, but overall maybe we're favouring something a little bit more unsettled as we move through the first week of June, which is something we've been talking about uh, in the videos a, a lot over recent weeks, of course. Finally, the CFS V2, so these are 500 mm of our heights broken down to week periods. The first week period will take us from the 23rd to the 29th of May. The coming week is dominated by an area of above average heights sitting over uh, the country, really. So below average heights are up to the northwest, jet stream doing something like that. We just get a lot of dry, fine, and pretty warm weather in uh, the week ahead. All change in week two, it's the 30th of May to the 5th of June, and a trough of low pressure is dropping in from the North Atlantic. The high pressure is pulling out into the middle of the Atlantic, and so obviously that's turning cooler and a lot more unsettled as well. That will bring much needed rain to many parts of the country. 
Week 3 is the 6th through to the 12th of June. Still looking a little bit unsettled, actually, with the below average heights generally to our west and southwest. Above average heights through here and over there. Probably still quite unsettled. Warmer, though, probably bring the wind up from a southerly type direction with that. And by the time you get through to week four, we're back to high pressure. So this is the 13th to the 19th of June. Area of high pressure event is back in over top of the country. That brings a return, uh, but, or an arrival, I suppose, of summer. Summer really gets going there, bringing lots of dry, fine and warm weather. So uh, it remains as it has been, uh, really, this outlook. We're going to have lots of dry weather up to the end of May. High pressure is in control. We could start to see something, going, something becoming a little bit more unsettled. Uh, as we go into the opening days of June. The hints have been there for a while. They're still there as well, really. So we might see something a little bit more unsettled through the early part of June. And then if we do, it'll be a case of how long that goes on for. How long is it before we go back to high pressure? And, uh, of course, that remains to be seen. Right, that's it for a day. Second video update will be back uh, this evening, probably around 6 o'clock, something like that, with the, uh, East, with the uh, CFS versus Beijing Climate Centre. Six months ago, so that's going to be quite an interesting uh, watch. You just have a bit of a laugh at it, but it will be uh, a bit of fun uh, this evening. Tomorrow, we're going to start off with our last analogs update for the summer of 2020. That's ahead, of course, of the, uh, of the um, summer forecast but being released on the 31st of May, a week tomorrow. Uh, we'll also have Gaz with his study round up tomorrow. East Chemistry, we have Metro France and D2D seasonal model update will be coming up uh, tomorrow as well. And we'll be live streaming from 5 o'clock. And in that live stream, I am going to show you the uh, 500 millibar uh, high tonality forecast from the Beijing Climate Centre for the winter of 2020-21. So tonight's update is going to take you from uh, June to November with the CFS and Beijing Climate Centre. But Tomorrow in the live stream, we will go even further out than that, and I'll show you what the Beijing Climate Centre is forecasting this month, the winter of 2020-21. That'll be a very interesting watch, I would have thought, and you'll be able to uh, watch the stream uh, from uh, 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Uh, but for this video, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.